Welcome to Fuerteventura, your island of choice for perfect beach holidays. The most breathtaking regions of the Canary Islands may be found on this long, thin island, where dazzling white sand is stroked by huge Atlantic waves. Now let's visit some of the best places in Fuerteventura. Fuerteventura is part of the Canary Islands archipelago and stands as the second largest island in this Spanish territory. Its climate is arid and warm, so if you're seeking some sun-drenched experiences, this is the place to go. Tourism on Fuerteventura is centered around its beaches, water activities, and nature reserves. Numerous airlines and charter flights connect the island with major cities across Europe. You can also use ferry services from neighboring Canary Islands. Fuerteventura's population has declined over the course of its history as a result of the island's dryness and economic struggles. However, the population has increased annually due to the growth of tourism in the 1980s, more than tripling in less than 10 years. Today, the island is home to 130,000 people. If you start your journey on the northern tip of the island, you'll find Coralejo, one of the two main towns. Coralejo is all about stunning beaches, especially the Coralejo Grandes Playas. The soft, golden sand and clear blue water make it a fantastic place to relax and explore. Coralejo served as a harbor for smugglers and pirates in the 17th century. This allowed people to avoid paying taxes and charges while importing food. The smugglers and pirates were eventually replaced by tourists. These days, Coralejo is a popular tourist destination mostly because of its amazing beaches. However, the town benefits from the regular ferry service to Lanzarote. Without a doubt, Coralejo is the main tourism destination to the north of Fuerteventura. The Aqua Water Park is the town's main draw for tourists. It's Fuerteventura's only water park to this day. Three windmills from the turn of the 20th century stand in the middle of Coralejo. You may stroll down the beach all the way to the dunes, beginning just south of the former, smaller pier with the Playa Coralejo. The Coralejo sand dunes stretch inland for around 5 kilometers and cover roughly 10 kilometers of shoreline. Actually, it's the biggest dune region in the Canary Islands. The dunes are also a great setting for sandboarding. If you take a 15-minute ferry ride from the port of Coralejo, you'll reach Lobos, a small island close to Fuerteventura. The island, which got its name from the old sea lions that formerly lived along its coastline, is famous for its untamed beauty, volcanic terrain, and wild environment. Its terrain offers amazing hiking trails that lead to panoramic viewpoints. The La Caldera Volcano, the highest point on Lobos at 127 meters, is the first sight that catches your eye when you begin the hike. You can go up to both the crater and the peak. The government of Fuerteventura has restricted access to Lobos since 2019 in order to protect the natural areas. The permit may only be reserved five days prior to your visit, however, it is free of charge. The permit is only valid for a maximum of three people. Additionally, it restricts your time on the island to four hours. The island of Fuerteventura is full with surprises. One such location is Betancuria, which has just 800 residents and is the island's least inhabited town. It is one of the most significant colonial sites in history of the Canary Islands and is situated in the southwest of the island. The town was established in 1404 by the Norman knight Jean de Bethencourt, who selected the town's site because it was isolated inland and would provide a stronger defense against pirate raids. It served as the capital of Fuerteventura, but also as the capital of the Kingdom of the Canary Islands. Thanks to its plentiful harvests of dry crops, the town reached its zenith in the 18th century. Today, tourism is the backbone of the entire local economy. The Santa Maria Church and the Archaeological Museum are two of the must-see locations here. The primary characteristic of Betancuria Rural Park is unquestionably its brownish landscape, and the natural area is quite interesting to scientists. 
Numerous types of protected plants can be found on its massifs and crags. Fuerteventura's capital, Puerto del Rosario, is a busy harbor and fishing town. The settlement was once known as Port of Goats or Puerto de Cabras, after the goat herds that made the island home. 1956 saw the name change because locals believed it exposed them to mockery. Although cruise ships and inter-island ferries dock here for trips to Fuerteventura, the town has not historically been a popular tourist destination. Nonetheless, it is receiving a bit of a makeover in the hopes of drawing more visitors down the road. The two town beaches have both been expanded, and the seafront area in particular has been developed and enhanced. The Playa Chica, a lovely sandy beach, is the main beach in Puerto del Rosario. Much money has been spent on the promenade that runs down the edge to improve the beach area's appeal. The town's small alleys are dotted with classic canary-style houses, and the harbor is the oldest area. Puerto del Rosario is also possibly Fuerteventura's greatest town for shopping. One of Fuerteventura's newer resorts is Caleta de Fuste. On the east coast, it lies 12 kilometers south of Puerto del Rosario and 8 kilometers south of the island's airport. Because of its central location on the island, Caleta de Fuste is a great place for those who want to move around to other areas of Fuerteventura. The town saw basically no development 40 years ago, but the resort has slowly expanded since then. A large beach and a modest pleasure boat harbor serve as the resort's core attractions. Three artificial sea lagoons and beaches may be found one kilometer south of the luxurious hotels. The Castillo de San Buenaventura, a small fortress built in 1743, stands close to the harbor. The Salt Museum, which details the importance of the island's white gold, is located only two kilometers from the town. Near the seaside, there are also two modern golf courses. The Faro de la Entallada Lighthouse was built in 1954 near the village of Las Playitas, on the east coast of Fuerteventura. It's the island's closest point to Africa, at a distance of only 100 kilometers to Morocco. Standing at a height of 60 meters, it was constructed in Moorish style. Architect Carlos Alcon came up with the idea for the project in an effort to blend Moorish elements with a more contemporary aesthetic. Every 18 seconds, the lighthouse emits three flashes of white light. This landmark is not only a functional structure, but also a popular tourist attraction with a viewpoint and car park. The paths surrounding Faro de la Entallada provide you the opportunity to explore the area around them, building your bond with the wild beauty of the Canary Islands. Set in the south of Fuerteventura in the municipality of Pajara is the large tourist resort of Moro Habla. Not only had the region not been developed until the early 20th century with the advent of agriculture, stock breeding, and salt manufacture, but the first hotel did not open until 1966. There's a massive white sand beach with calm waves that shimmer in tones of green and turquoise. The beach is called Moro Hable Beach, and it runs from the center of the town in the south to Las Javiotas Beach in the north. A boulevard with finest shopping options and a view of the iconic Moro Hable Lighthouse, which rises out of the ocean, runs parallel to the kilometers-long beach. Despite the town's emphasis on tourism, a walk around the historic district evokes the relaxed, old-world charm that is so characteristic of coastal communities. Most of the restaurants are located in the old town. Due to its seaside location, fresh, excellent fish is assured. Along with sailing boat rentals, jet ski excursions, and quad bike tours, the region offers many diving schools for those who prefer activities on or under the sea. There is also some good snorkeling nearby. If you stay in rocky areas, you may be able to spot giant stingrays, barracudas, and moray eels. Ferries departing from Moro Habla Harbor head toward Gran Canaria. Did you ever visit Fuerteventura? Feel free to share your story in the comments. If you love this video, hit the like button and subscribe to World Travel Guide for more travel videos.